I hear it all the time. Life's not fair. What? Life isn't fair? Are you kidding me? I breathe just like the next guy. I'm gonna buy my groceries just like the next guy. Yeah. The water comes out of the ground just like well, sometimes it comes from the city, but it's it comes out of the ground. <clears throat> there are so many things in life which we can complain about, things being not fair. Well, I hate to tell you. There, there's no fairness in life. There's, there's positive fairness, and then there's negative fairness. I went to school with a mass murderer, a serial killer. That's right. I did. I went to school with him. Jack Owen Spillman. Yeah, when I knew him, he was Jack Wilson. That was his name given at birth or something. I don't know, he had a sketchy childhood. We we worked together in the cafeteria. We liked frying. <laughs> we made fried buttered bread. So we would butter our bread, because they made, in the cafeteria, see, the <laughs> when I went to school, child labor was a thing. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we get to work in the cafeteria and we got paid for it and that was how I got all my money in school for <laughs> being able to leave at lunch hour and go to town and buy a pocket full of candy and then munch on it throughout the day I was known for that knowing that uh, Todd always had munchies he would, yeah, had his camouflage pants because, well, <laughs> I got picked on as a child too. So, one of one of my rituals of getting picked on was being drugged down the hill at in the morning and and at lunch. So, there it is. Life isn't fair. Sometimes you turn out to be a murderer. Sometimes you turn out to be a guy on YouTube uh, who was bullied throughout school and most of his life uh, after the age of 12 because at the age of 12 I went through a major horse accident losing m most of my memory uh, probably more good memories than bad but somehow the bad ones kind of stick out before the age of 12 that that, that also occurred in my life so when life is fair uh, you don't strive to be better because you're just going to be equal like everybody else. So you have to find different ways because in today's world, today's society, a lot of value is placed on the material earthly stuff that we have around us. And I, I myself, I'm, I'm a victim myself. Look at all this shit I got in here. I spent forever collecting the stuff that I do because I have a, a dream in my mind of something that I want to do. And... Because I have a, I have a, a goal purpose life, right? You have to have a goal purpose life in order to know what you are and what your purpose is going to be. Well, my purpose is to, well, formulate a bunch of stuff into uh, a bunch of art. Uh, that one day, maybe at one point, I will, I will uh, be able to sell. This is this this hat belonged to my grandfather. This. My grandfather was uh, a mighty sailing man. He was a skipper, brave and sure. You see, he worked as a... He was a ferry boat captain in the state of Washington in the Evergreen Fleet, as you can see here. Uh, is the ferry boat service a uh, part of the Merchant Marines? Uh, of which my father was also a part of the Merchant Marines. I did see his... Uh, Merchant Marine card that he had before uh, he died, but I never got to ask him any part of his service because he chose not to strive to be a part of my life and thereby giving me the reality of what his life uh, did mean or whether 
what it didn't mean in my life. Now, is it fair to say that my father was the town drunk of Seattle? Probably. Uh, from all from what I've gained and understood, that he he seemed to be a a, a, a frequent uh, connoisseur of the uh, the environment there, whether it was for food or drink or entertainment. Uh, so, wow, we there is that. Now, the purpose to have a a goal driven life. Did my father have a goal in his life? Was was I his goal as his only child in the last of uh, the family line, the family heritage? There's, there's nobody after me. Was it was it fair for him to leave the entire family fortune to the bartender? Did she hold something over his head? He was kind of a pervert. Um, did she hold something over his head where he had to sign away everything that he owns to her after he died? I don't know. I didn't fight the will. I let it go as much as I wanted to fight for that $300,000. As much as I wanted to fight it, I thought, you know, <clears throat> what's it all worth? right? The stress, the anxiety, the fight, the bullshit. What's it really worth? It's that earthly stuff that people fight over. I gave it up. I chose for the country song option. So, I've also got the story. So, see, if I would, if I would have fought and won, I, I could have, a, I fought the bartender and won, type, type thing going on, but I, uh, I went with uh, letting her have it. It was God's will. That was what he wanted, even though the, the will had been written eight years prior to his death. Uh, there could have been a, a will of contention in there, but, you know, it is what it is. I, was that fair? Was that really fair? Doesn't matter, because it is what it is. The history is written in our books through our choices. See, there's a transition point in that present tense that we have, the, that tense that we live in. There's a, there's a choice of reality of seeing what we can be, what we can visualize, yet we cannot see, right? Because we're building that ladder up and we are climbing to that point where we will be able to one day achieve that success. We don't know what we're doing unless we have enough foresight with God and our foresight to be able to continue that positive path because nobody focuses on negativity, right? Negative things just just happen. Bullshit happens, right? So you don't focus on being a bad guy. You, well, if you're, <laughs> if, if you're Jack, you do. That was, that was his sole intent was to kill people. He wanted to be the greatest murderer in history. Yeah, I know, weird, right? How could somebody focus on wanting to be the greatest murderer in a psychopath? I mean, it's beyond what I can fathom, right? Um, so here's the thing. Life's not fair. You've been dealt the cards that you have. You have lived your history to this point. To this point in transition where it is you who is going to see this video and say, wow, there's this point in transition where I can go, I can actually write my story. And a lot of people don't think of that. They just think about survival and what's next, right? Because it's, they don't have that godly vision in their head that says, wow, what am I, what, what book am I writing? A horror film? What am I doing? You know? And there's a point in transition where I think there's people come a little bit closer to God in understanding that there is a goal, purpose, life that is driving you. You may or may not know what it is, but I know for this for a fact, if you focus deep down meditative thought, it will come to you and you'll be surprised. Deal with what your love is, 
ones deep inside your heart, deep within, and the tools that you have around you to build the next part of your ladder. Now, remember, you're going to need to reinforce each and every rung of that ladder with a bar of metal that's, that will bend. If you do it with just a stick, it can snap, and you can fall all the way down that ladder to the very bottom. And that's if you, if you reinforce it with alcoholism, yeah, that rung is probably going to snap because you're really going to want to build your next ladder so you can make more money, so you can spend more money on alcohol or drugs, but, you know... What do I know, right? <clears throat> so, focus on who you want to be with what you have right now. The mistakes you've made in the past are your new chapters in your past. Your past chapters that are gone, you don't want to talk about them anymore. They're still going to form who you were. It's going to change your insight and your perspective into seeing your direction because your direction can change 180 degrees in a matter of an instant. Oh, well, you have a near-death experience. Well, I've had a couple of those. <laughs> so, you know, they change your direction of thinking, and that's a new chapter in your life. When are you going to start the next chapter of your life? Will it be this moment, this interaction between you and I, when we have kind of just opened, just, just opened a little flower to a big field? But now that your focus is changing from that little flower in front of you, wow, look, there's, look at, wow, you can, you'll be able to see all those flowers in front of you, ripe for the picking. Don't stop. Build your ladder to success. Carry on. Eyes open. No fear. Move ahead. Move along. Get or die. Y'all have a great day. Be safe. This is the Desert Artist. I love you. Bye.